are things that really should not even be a crime. We'll talk about this in the article. The good thing about that is they finally have released the gag order that they put on him. He says, not long ago, I was a mild-mannered freelance journalist, activist, and satirist, but last Thursday I was sentenced to 63 months in federal prison in a case that Reporters Without Borders has cited as a key factor in its reduction of America's press freedom rankings from 33 to 46. That's pretty far down. Now, the title of his article is My Post-Cyberpunk Indentured Servitude. Why did he call it that? Well, it turns out that not only is he getting another five plus years in jail, but they have also ordered him to pay Stratfor $800,000, he says, which is to say that I will spend the rest of my life in a strange state of post-cyberpunk indentured servitude to an amoral private intelligence firm that is perhaps best known for having spied on Bhopal activists in behalf of Dow Chemical. Now, what did he do to harm them? He didn't break into their servers. He didn't steal any data from them. He wasn't a hacker. He was a reporter. When he saw the information that WikiLeaks had uh, obtained from this, he said that he offered to arrange with the hackers to redact any of those communications that could, he said, potentially have endangered any foreign contacts if made public. And he said, because of this, that is why they're giving him the massive fine. Now, he also points out, as we have many times, that one of the charges that they brought against him, of course, was saying that he threatened the life of an FBI agent by tweeting, dead men can't leak stuff, illegally shoot the son of a blank. He says, I'll admit this is clearly an outright call for murder, and it would certainly seem to warrant an FBI investigation. The problem is that it wasn't I who ordered this. It wasn't Barrett Brown, but rather Fox News commentator Bob Beckel, who said it on national television in the course of a no-doubt productive discussion about WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. He had merely retweeted that. And then he goes on to say, and this is the last part of it, you really should read this entire article. He said, other matters that are just now coming to light, such as revelation two days before his sentencing, that the Department of Justice had withheld from his defense team sealed chat transcripts from the Jeremy Hammond hacking case, which contradicted its key claim that he was a co-conspirator in the Strat 4 hack. And there's still other aspects of this, such as the FBI seizure of my copy of the Declaration of Independence as evidence of my criminal activity. He says, I blush to even commit it to print, lest I not be believed, even despite the fact that the FBI has now confirmed it. Well, welcome to the club, Barrett Browning. We constantly put things out that the FBI itself has admitted and confirmed that people don't believe. And of course, we have reported for many, many years how the government has labeled as domestic terrorists the founding fathers of our country, teaching this in, in, in seminars to law enforcement and to the military. And so, of course, it's not a surprise to us that they would confiscate Barrett Brown's Declaration of Independence and use it as evidence of his extremism, that they would twist things that they see on social media where he was merely quoting the real serious death threats, people calling for the government to assassinate Julian Assange, putting that out there and saying, you are trying to make a death threat against an FBI agent. That is why we should be very concerned about any more control of anything by the federal government, but especially about the internet, because right now the internet is the linchpin of our First Amendment free speech rights. Stay with us right after the break. We're going to talk about why French fries tell us a great deal about vaccines. We'll be right back. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and could not be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade, bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosyl cobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. 
2015 is almost here, and with it comes those New Year's resolutions to finally transform your body the way you want it. There's a reason over 88% of New Year's resolutions fail. Make this year different by equipping yourself with Oxy Powder, the next level in cleansing the body naturally. Using Super Oxygenation, Oxy Powder, available through InfoWarsLife.com, gently cleanses the body while you sleep with easy capsules. Tens of thousands of individuals have used Oxy Powder to cleanse their bodies and aid in their transformations. Even InfoWars Nightly News Director Rob Dew has been using Oxy Powder with incredible success. I took it that first day, then I took it for six more days after that. 12 pounds melted off in about a week. I'd say a week, seven days. 2015 can be different. Diet and exercise are important, but a lot of us have already tried that. Oxy Powder flushes it out. Secure your Oxy Powder at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. Well, McDonald's falling sales worldwide caused its CEO to lose his job last week, but McDonald's folded all of their McDonald's in Iceland back in 2009. Of course, it was a fallout from the economic crisis of 2008. The last burgers were sold on Halloween 2009, and one of those last burgers, the last cheeseburger and last bit of fries, was bought by someone and has been on display under a glass case ever since. And guess what? It looks brand new. Now, of course, we could always say that these fast food French fries are merely potatoes. But of course, there was also an article last week about how the McDonald's French fries have 19 ingredients, some of them some pretty heavy chemicals, even things like silly putty. Now, let me tell you, if you've got a French fry that was cooked in some pretty disgusting oils and has silly putty and other preservatives types of things added to it, it's no longer just a potato. And what we can learn from this is that vaccines that have adjuvants like aluminum, that have preservatives like formaldehyde and mercury are no longer just vaccines. That becomes an important part of the story. And yet we see this continuing push to try to make vaccines mandatory, a demonizing of people who have concerns about the risks of vaccines, who believe that they're not being told the whole truth, and who know that these additives that are put into the vaccines have some very nasty consequences. We saw Obama just this last uh, weekend on a review say, just get your vaccines. And listen to how the mainstream media reporter pushes the idea that we should have mandatory vaccinations. Yeah. Um, do you feel there should be a requirement that parents get their kids vaccinated? Are parents who aren't getting their kids vaccinated endangering? Others. I understand that uh, there are families that uh, in some cases are concerned about the effect of vaccinations. The science is you know, pretty indisputable. We've looked at this again and again. Now, Obama says it's undisputed science. Let me tell you, there should never be anything such as undisputed science. Scientific facts as well as theories should always be tested. That's what we do in schools. We have uh, children go back and reenact the experiments to prove simple things like gravity so they understand the scientific method so that they're skeptical, so that they don't just take the word of somebody because they're a person in authority, because they're somebody with a degree, or even worse, because it's the government. Remember that Louis Pasteur had to, spot, had to fight against the undisputed facts of the day in terms of telling people that these diseases were caused by germs. He had to fight against the entire established community. He had to fight conventional scientific wisdom. The Wright brothers made advances where Langley did not because Langley went with the charts that had been handed to him. He accepted those as undisputed facts of science. The Wright brothers instead went back and did their own measurements. And based on that, they came up with a machine that could actually fly, even though Langley never got off the ground. But of course, even though Obama is saying that these are undisputed facts, he didn't say that a few years ago. When he was a senator who was running for president, he said, we've seen skyrocketing autism rates. Some people are suspicious that it's connected to the vaccines. This person included. This is Obama talking. He said, the science right now is inconclusive, but we have to research it. What has changed in the last few years? Well, I'll tell you what's changed. Obama's 
gotten a lot of corporate money. That's what's changed. Hillary Clinton said the same thing. She said in 2008 as a candidate, she says, I am committed to make investments to find the causes of autism, including possible environmental causes like vaccines. And of course, we've just seen Chris Christie come out and say, well, I think we should have a balanced approach when in the UK, they pushed him on, shouldn't you have mandatory vaccinations for all the children in the United States? He said, I think we should take a balanced approach. We should step back and, and take a look and understand that there are different diseases. There are different vaccines. We need to evaluate the risks of these different things. And he got a lot of fire. And so he now has come back and says, there's no question. Kids should be vaccinated. So I guess that means that uh, Chris Christie on this issue, like so many others, is going to be absolutely indistinguishable from the establishment Republicans and Democrats. And of course, we have the CDC out there warning of a large outbreak of measles. Did you hear them warning about a large outbreak of Ebola? Did you hear the, Did you see them acting very quickly to quarantine people? No, we didn't see that. Yet, this is what they're saying at the CDC. They're saying that not having people vaccinated makes us vulnerable. And this is what the director of the CDC said. He said, what you do for your own kids doesn't just affect your family, it affects other families as well. The more kids who are not vaccinated, the more they put their neighbor's kids at risk as well. I'm sorry, I thought that the vaccine kept them from getting the disease. Think about that admission for a second. The CDC is saying that the kids who have had vaccines are at risk for getting the disease. They're admitting that it's not effective. Well, is it safe? No, not really. And a story on New American Today talking about how anti-vaccine parents are being blamed for the Mickey Mouse measles. They point out that an analysis of CDC data that you can find at vaxtruth.org, Don Pappel notes that prior to the introduction of the measles vaccine in the 1960s, only 0.015% of measles cases resulted in death. And the percentage of people who die globally from measles today is still very low at 0.015%. 0.00328%. Think about that. That means that you are 99.997% chance of not dying. Now, that's a pretty low risk. Contrast that to Ebola, where you had a 70 to 90% chance that you're going to die if you get that disease. A disease that they did not and still do not exactly know how it's transmitted because so many doctors and nurses are coming down with it even though they are exercising all the precautions that are supposed to shut down its transmission. So you've got one disease that you have a 99.997% chance you're not going to die and they're trying to push mandatory vaccines on people. And on the other hand, they step back and tell the public there's nothing to worry about with a disease that has a 90% fatality rate. Now, they point out that it's been known for a long time, and even before the vaccines, we had a tremendous drop in the number of people who died because it was known that cod liver oil could be used to give people supplementation of vitamin A, and that was very effective in terms of treating measles. And yet we see over and over, if you, if you Google the measles vaccine, what you'll see is a story about Roald Dahl's uh, the author who wrote James and the Giant Peach and Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, he had a child who died from catching measles. It happens, it's very rare, but it happens. Nevertheless, they make that personal story that you can attach to because you know that author. That's what they use to try to get you to not look at what the actual risks are. That's the technique that's used over and over again. Again, going back to the New American article, they again quote vaxtruth.org saying that it's worth noting that in the 2011 measles outbreak in New York where 88 people contracted measles, the ground zero patient was fully vaccinated, a 22-year-old woman. And of course, that's a very important point. In the MMR vaccines for measles, mumps, and rubella, they have a live but weakened version of all three of those diseases. That's what they're vaccinating children with, live weakened versions of all three of those. So their immune system, their immature immune system, has to handle an invasion by three different diseases. That's why sometimes they get measles, and we don't know who patient zero is in this Mickey Mouse outbreak. But that hasn't started, stopped a frenetic call to mandate these vaccines. Look at the USA Today editorial from someone named Berezov. He says, your right to be sick ends where my right to be healthy begins. 
He doesn't want to hear any objections on the basis of civil rights. In a USA Today article, a contributor 